Welcome. The title of this week's climate update is El Nino Has Arrived. NOAA has just released its global climate report for April of 2015. And there's one word that can describe it, and that is hot. The global average temperature for April was nearly 0.8 degrees centigrade above the 20th century average. That made it the fourth warmest April on record. Year to date, that is January to April 2015, was the warmest such period in at least the last 135 years. The period from May 2014 to April 2015 was the warmest 12 consecutive months on record. It tied with the period from April 2014 to March 2015. So this indicates that our uh, last 13 months have been warming quite significantly. You can see this in the temperature distribution map. Here dark blue pixels indicate record cold, dark red pixels indicate record warm. There are only four pixels that show record cool, where there are over 100 pixels that show record warm. We can see a similar pattern in the individual station data. Taken over the last 365 days, daily record highs outnumbered record lows by nearly 84,000 to 55,000. Going to the monthly records, which are much more difficult to set, we had nearly 3,400 record highs set compared with only 1,700 record lows. All-time records were even more out of balance, with 131 record highs compared with only 61 record lows. The only reasonable conclusion that you can draw from this is that global temperatures are continuing to rise. Here is the temperature anomaly for April for land and ocean in graphical form, and if you fit these data with a linear trend over the last 50 years, you get a constant rate of 0.16 degrees centigrade per decade for global warming. You can look at this yet another way, which is to do what is called a 12-month running mean. This actually takes out the annual variability, which is quite significant. And when you do that, you can plainly see there is a constant upward trend over the last 50 years, a very little sign of this temperature hiatus that people like to talk about so much. And the problem is, it's only likely to get worse. For now, we've established El Nino conditions. That means that the eastern Pacific has warmed in the equatorial zone. This generally increases world temperatures. The models now show that there's a 90% chance of this El Nino lasting through the Northern Hemisphere summer and an 80% chance of it lasting all the remaining part of 2015. If that is the case, we can only expect more records to fall for the remaining part of 2015 and 2015 will likely supplant 2014 as the warmest year on record. El Ninos have profound effects on weather, and one of the countries most affected is the United States. Here are the projections of what will happen to the US weather if El Nino persists for the coming summer. The centre and southeast of the country should experience significant rainfall, where the northwest, particularly the state of Washington, should be in seeing drought conditions. As far as temperatures are concerned, the areas that are getting the most rain will be cooler than average, so Texas and Oklahoma will be getting uh, more rain than normal, whereas the West Coast, and California in particular, will be getting higher temperatures, as will the southeast and the far northeast. I have some climate science in the news that I want to share with you. An extraordinary heat wave has hit India, killing over 2,000 people. Temperatures have exceeded 43 degrees centigrade for several days. While heat waves are not uncommon prior to the uh, monsoon season in India, this one is particularly brutal and long-lasting. Research has shown that the situation has been exacerbated by global warming and an increasing population drawing on an ever-decreasing supply of fresh water. A couple of years ago, Texas and Oklahoma were facing a severe drought. Now they have the opposite problem, too much water. For example, in Gainesville, Texas, they had nearly 30 inches of rain in just a few days. As of the 30th of May, the death toll stands at 28. Over 10,000 cars have been destroyed by floodwaters. And there has been over $45 million worth of flood damage done in Houston alone. Many of the problems seem to stem from the fact that the state government has no central flood plan and has been left to city and county governments to work out their own flood plans. This has resulted in a patchwork quilt of rules and regulations across the state. To make things worse, 
those governments have allowed almost unrestricted development in the floodplains. This has left a lot of people and property vulnerable to major floods like we're seeing now. Perhaps the last place you'd expect to be setting record high temperatures at this time of year is Alaska. But that is exactly what is happening. Eagle Alaska reached a dizzy 91 degrees Fahrenheit in May. That's a record high. That made it hotter than any day registered so far in Houston or Dallas, Texas. In Alaska, it was over 80 degrees Fahrenheit for an unprecedented nine straight days. Fairbanks was hotter than 60% of U.S. cities on Memorial Day, which is quite a remarkable record. How anyone can still be denying that global warming is real and a clear and present danger to us is a mystery to me. There's so much evidence indicating that this is in fact the case, that these people must either be paranoid delusional or have a financial and or political motivation in denying that global warming exists. For anyone that's still in two minds about this, all you have to do is look at the evidence. And I mean by that the real scientific evidence, not that put around in blogs or newspaper articles and things of that sort. Just look at the scientific evidence and it's all there. Very plain, very clear. 